Hey everybody, this is a brief lecture on science measurements, uncertainty, and error. We're going to talk about different types of errors, different types of uncertainty, um, and what they mean in terms of measurement. So first of all, uh, pretty much every experiment we do requires scientists to make measurements, and measurements are rarely going to be exactly the same, even if we do a repeated trial. And measurements are always going to uh, differ from the true value. Uh, at least they're going to somewhat uh, differ from the true thing that we're trying to measure. So these deviations from the true value are called errors. Uh, the certainty of a measurement also depends on the measuring device and how well controlled and repeatable the experiment is. All measurements are uncertain at some level, and we have to account for this uncertainty. And so we can talk about both uncertainty and error. They're sometimes used interchangeably, um, but they're just a fact of life whenever we're doing science. They don't indicate necessarily that something is was done incorrectly. Um, we just need to account for the fact that there will always be some uncertainty. So two sources of error in a measurement could be limitations in the sensitivity of the instrument. Say your instrument only measures to like a, a meter stick that only measures to the nearest half of a centimeter instead of the nearest millimeter. And also imperfections in experimental design or measurement techniques. And these might cause us to get an incorrect measurement if our experiment doesn't, uh, isn't designed correctly. And so we can kind of classify uh, uncertainties and errors into two categories, random errors and systematic errors. Random errors are always going to be present. Um, so let's, let's not look at this, uh, this graph just yet. Random errors are caused by imperfections in the observer. If you, uh, if you read, if you take a reading incorrectly or a little bit off each time, um, you'll get a slightly different measurement each trial. Um, random errors can be caused by the readability of the equipment, or random errors can be caused by external effects on the observed item. For example, if we are measuring uh, the acceleration due to gravity and we measure the time it takes for a ball to drop, well, um, we're going to have to deal with our own reaction time in timing and starting the timer and stopping the timer and that there it's going to cause a random error. Sometimes we'll press the button a little too early, sometimes we'll stop the timer a little bit too late. So we'll get we'll get an error, an uncertainty there. Um, so what random errors do is they basically, let's take a look at this graph, if the true value is this blue the true distribution of our measurement is this blue value. When we add in random error, that distribution spreads out. So random errors don't cause our average to change because random errors are evenly spread out on either side of our measurement. All they do is cause our measurement to be more variable. Uh, it stretches out the distribution, but it doesn't change the average. So we can reduce random error actually by taking repeated measurements and calculating the average. If we have random error and we only do one trial, then we don't know if our one trial is going to be way out here or right at the center. If we take a lot of repeated trials, we should get, we should get an average at least that's in the, uh, that's at the center close to the true value. So random errors cause variability. Systematic errors are typically present, and, and these actually cause our measurements to be incorrect. So, so uh, sources of systematic errors include instrumental, physical, and human limitations. For example, if our instrument is not calibrated correctly, uh, then we're going to get incorrect readings every time we use that instrument. Uh, and we'll get incorrect readings in a specific way every time we use the instrument. If we have zero offset error, that is our device is not zeroed properly. For example, if you're using a scale and it doesn't read zero when there's nothing on it, 
every single other reading will be incorrect. Um, other sources include uh, when an observer is imperfect in the same way each time or our experiment is designed in some way that it adds or subtracts somewhere every time to our measurement. So what systematic errors do is they cause our uh, they cause our measurements to shift. So if this blue distribution shows the true distribution of measurements, a system error might cause all of our measurements to be shifted. Um, so systematic errors are errors that are the same uh, that are that cause a error in the same way each time, cause us to measure too high or too low in the same way each time. So we really want to uh, reduce systematic errors by calibrating our instruments, making sure uh, and making sure our experiments are correctly designed. We can also talk about precision and accuracy in measurements. Precision is how reproducible measurements are. And we account for this with, uh, well, a, a precise instrument, a precise measurement has small random error and or it has many significant figures. Significant figures also account for precision. Accuracy tells us how close are our measurements to, uh, to the true value. So accurate measurements indicate a small systematic error. How, how true are our answers? So we can talk about precision and accuracy with a dartboard if we imagine a person throwing darts trying to hit the bullseye. In this first situation, the darts are not near the bullseye and they're pretty far spread out. So we would say that's not accurate and not precise. We're not hitting where we want to hit. This is our true value. And we're not repeatable. The throws aren't repeatable. In our second trial, the darts are all spread out, so that would be imprecise. But on average, they are at the center of the bullseye. So we would say these are accurate, but not precise. There's a lot of variability, but on average, it's right where we want to be. Here in this third setup, are, we're off the bullseye, so we are inaccurate. But there's very little spread in our values. Our throws are consistent and reproducible, which means we're precise with our throws. And here we are both precise and accurate because there's little variability, and on average, we're on the bullseye. The precision of, an ins uh, of a measurement is determined by the measuring device itself. For example, if we're trying to measure where this arrow is using this ruler, it's somewhere between 26.1 and 26.2 um, centimeters, and it looks like it's about 3 tenths of the way. So we write down our measurement as 26.13 centimeters. Now notice I did one digit past the smallest gradation on my ruler, or on my meter stick. This last digit is an estimate digit, but it's a pretty good estimate. It looks like it's 3 tenths of the way in between these gradations. Uh, however, different observers could read something different. Somebody else might guess 26.12, and somebody else might say 26.14, because our last digit is an estimate. So that means our last significant digit has some uncertainty. Uh, so this is how we're always going to read off measurements on analog instruments. We do one digit past the gradation, but our last digit has uncertainty of plus or minus one. So measurement precision is limited by the instrument, and this is pretty much the reason we use significant digits. They show the precision of a measurement. Uh, we can also talk about precision in terms of repeated trials. If the repeated trials are the same, that indicates high precision. If they're very far off, that indicates low precision. And that's closer to the dartboard analogy before. Uh, so we always want to make sure, uh, we always want the most precise and accurate experimental data. The precision and accuracy are, of course, limited by the instrumentation and data gathering techniques. 
So when we do an experiment, we want to identify possible errors and their magnitudes. We want to try to reduce the magnitudes of these errors as much as possible using precise instruments and correct experimental design. If we collect a lot of data, we can also uh, reduce random error. So no matter how good we are, there will always be uncertainty, there will always be error. So we just need to account for that uncertainty using significant digits and other techniques. And we need to communicate that uncertainty in our measurements and results. And in a later lecture, we'll talk about how we can account for that uncertainty in the results. Thank you. That's all. Bye.